So let's continue the Botboard application by adding events. And um, what we want to achieve uh, in this Botboard is that when the user clicks with the mouse on uh, one of the boards, the board will automatically start adding letters. So as long as the user is uh, um, doing a mouse down, having the mouse button down on the board, a, uh, a letter will be added. Uh, uh, so this would kind of simulate you writing on the blackboard. Uh, we need events, of course. We need to handle the uh, uh, mouse down event. Uh, and we will start off by doing some modifications uh, to the code. Uh, first off, uh, I, I will uh, work a little bit with the, the, the style sheet. Uh, so let's just see what I will do. Uh, so I will add a style for the P element as, as well as for the host, this case being the Bart board. So for the P element, and remember since we are in a component or in the shadow DOM, uh, we can write P and P will only affect uh, elements inside of my shadow. Um, so P uh, being this one in this case, uh, I will set the margin margin to zero and padding to zero. So that when we look at the page reload, well, did not, uh, oh colon as well. So now I'm forgetting to write colons in, 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 in the style sheets just because I'm not doing it in the JavaScript. So as you can see uh, uh, we get uh, rid of the padding uh, in the top uh, by doing this. Okay looks a little bit nicer uh, and now instead of just writing the text right on the board like we've done now we should actually uh, do this when the mouse is clicked. So Let's start off by doing that. We don't need to add, uh, think about adding the letters uh, quite yet. Uh, so when we're connecting uh, uh, events to, to our web components or our custom elements, it's a good practice to do this inside of the connected callback. Uh, so when uh, this element is connected to the DOM, then we add our uh, events. Uh, so instead of when it's connected to the DOM, adding the text to the board, we uh, will get rid of this one, or we could just comment it out, I think, um, for now, might need later, uh, and we start adding events. And in this case, we will add the event to this, uh, because this is the BART board element, and we want the, uh, we want to add the event listener to the BART board element, this case being this. So uh, this dot add event listener that uh, like my, yeah, so of course. It's a shame that you don't get the uh, the autocomplete when you you are using custom elements like this. So mouse down. Uh, is when the user clicks the mouse button and it, uh, as long as it's down. So when the mouse is down, we will do something. What will we do? I will just call a method on our element, calling this dot um, write uh, or start writing. No, write is better. Right. So. <coughs> Uh, and we need to add the right method, right? And I will actually, since since this is an event, we will look at many different ways of writing this. But since this is an event handler, I could call it uh, on write, and I will make it see my uh, uh, private as well. Uh, so renaming this to on write. Since this is an event handler, I could uh, add the event uh, uh, parameter because the, the, event, the, the web browser will add an attribute called event to this uh, event listener or, or to this uh, when it calls this method. Okay, 
then we could take this code, add it to on right. Whoa. I should learn the shortcut for commenting out stuff. Like that. Okay, so when we add events event listener when the mouse is down we call on the right and the on the right will only just echo out the text save oh what did i do so let's see so log uh, This add event list, as I will try to spell it right as well, listener, that, clicked, 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 okay, good. So, so this one will run, if it has attribute text, it will add the text, and we have already done that when we uh, did the attribute changed callback. Uh, in this case, I will just comment this or remove this one. Save. Uh, it now has the default value being the one added uh, when we create the P element. Uh, if I click, it will change. When I press the mouse down, it will change to the new text. So everything is working. And we could actually remove this one now as well. So no default text, empty board, mouse down, it adds the text. Perfect. So I will probably start working with this P element a lot. And as of right now, I'm, I'm always querying the shadow root and querying it for, for getting a reference to this P element. So instead of doing this over and over again, which is quite a costly operation, I could do this once uh, and save it to, to my uh, element instead. So let's do that. So in the constructor, after I construct the, the shadow root, I uh, add this underscore p equals this one. So, so I will basically create a reference to this p element and then I have a direct reference to the p element without needing to query the, the, the shadow doom all the time. Save and then we could change this one to being just this dot uh, underscore p dot inner text and as of right now this is the only place i'm using the p element but we will start using it uh, uh, at, at more places soon so still works perfect okay uh, instead of, instead of adding all the text at once we want to add one letter after the other then we need some way of knowing which letter is the one we're supposed to write right right now. We need some kind of index uh, starting with zero because that's the length of the text. Uh, we need a way to be able to get each and every character out of the text string. And we need some kind of interval to be able to do this every say 100th millisecond or something like that. That will be 10 characters a second more or less. Um, so let's start off by adding the interval actually. So on right, instead of just adding the text once, we want some kind of interval. And we have the, the set interval <coughs> uh, method for this. And the set interval method, as, a, as the first uh, uh, attribute, it will take the, the callback function. And as the second one, it will take how often this interval should be, be, be executed. So as a second parameter, we will add 100 just to do this every 100 milliseconds, or that's a little bit too often, 300 milliseconds maybe. And as the first one, we will add the callback function. And I will just do an inline callback function using an arrow function like this. So since I have no, <coughs> uh, the set interval have no event information sent to the, uh, the callback function. So, so I will just add empty parentheses to, to indicate that this 
this callback function has no parameters. And then we will add the arrow and then we'll add a block for this function. And then I can do a line break inside of the block and save this one. Uh, so this set interval will run each and every 300th milliseconds. And we could try to add this text to the interval and save and press down the mouse button and I thought it would run it more than once. Okay. Mm. We have this uh, if if uh, if element just testing if it already yeah if it has text uh, ah well it it will uh, with dot inner text it will just write it over all over and over again so instead of doing equals we could do a plus equals this will add so let's try that click and you will see that it will continue to, to add you every 300 milliseconds. Uh, there is several problems. First of all, I've already released the mouse button and this will continue to, to, to uh, add uh, forever, basically. And as you will see, if I, if I start the next one and I press the mouse button several times, it will add more intervals and it will go faster and faster and faster. So we need some way of stopping this as well. Uh, the way to stop this is to, to remember that the set interval will return an ID and we could use that ID to stop uh, uh, the, uh, the stop the interval basically. So start off, we will start off by adding a uh, Uh, a property uh, called who interval ID and I will set it to null just to set it to something in the constructor because we don't know that yet uh, and we could this dot underscore set no <laughs> interval ID equals set interval so the set interval will return the uh, interval ID we will store it on our class and now we have a way of stopping it by doing clear timeout. Where should we stop it? Well, we should have uh, on stop writing. We should have some kind of event triggering when we want to stop writing. And inside of the stop writing, we could do a clear timeout, use the interval ID to stop the timeout. So on stop writing, then we need to attach an event for that. Uh, of course, we have this one, the mouse down. We could do a mouse up. So when the, the button is released, uh, we could do on stop writing like that. So let's try that. Mouse down, mouse up, mouse down, mouse up. Well, works perfectly. The problem with programming, as you will know, is that bugs will be present all the time, and so you need a way to fix those bugs. Uh, you could try this many times and it will work. However, there is one problem with this solution is that if I press down the mouse button on the board and then moves the mouse and releases the button outside the board, then the mouse up will not trigger. And now we have a problem because the board will not stop writing. There are several fixes for this. The simplest one in this case is to add yet another uh, event listener and listen for mouse leave. Uh, mouse leave will, uh, will trigger when the mouse, the cursor leaves the scope of the element. And that means that the mouse up will not trigger anymore. So by doing this and, and duplicating uh, the listening for on stop writing, we will probably get rid of that bug. Let's see. Click, release, click, drag. And as soon as I leave this BART board, it will stop writing. And I could press it down again and continue writing. So. This works pretty neat, actually. Uh, let's see if it works as well with this one. Yeah, it does. Perfect. Uh, 
Where is this U coming from? Did I add that in app.js? Oh, well, yeah. I will remove that one. We tried. I will not pollute the global scope. That's a better. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now the next problem is that we want to add letters instead of, of the whole sentence at once. Uh, this is the logic for, for adding the whole sentence at once. Instead of doing that, we need to add letter by letter, starting with letter zero. Then we need some way of remembering uh, which was the last letter uh, uh, that we wrote. And I will do that with creating a new property called uh, letter. And that equals zero at the beginning. So we will start with the first letter. And instead of adding uh, the whole attribute text, uh, I will uh, instead uh, do something like just getting the text and, uh, um, and, and getting one of the letters. You can do that by, by, by the bracket notation, the same as you use an array. So, so by doing that, I will actually get the first letter in a string. You could also use the chair at uh, in the same way. So whatever you prefer, basically. The other one is shorter. This is probably more correct way of doing it. Uh, the thing is, I, 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 I could do this. This get the attribute text. Yeah, well, this is probably the simplest one. We don't. We do not need to to replicate this text as a property on our Bartboard. We could just use the attribute uh, because it's there. We have already stored the text in the attribute. So by doing this, I will instead of adding the whole text, I will only add the first letter. And we could try that actually. Um, I I I I I I. I. Or, oh, I'm building like a, a, a railroad. Oh, nice. And so instead of doing the zero, we can now use the letter. Uh, and the letter is zero. And as we have written one letter, we want to increase the letter by one. Of course, we could do something like this dot letter plus equals one. Well, an even simpler solution to that is just adding plus plus after the letter. Remember the difference between plus plus like that and plus plus like that. Having it before uh, the variable will uh, first uh, increase and then it will release its value. Uh, so this one will start by one, but doing this, it will first release the zero and then it will add one. So it becomes one and the next time it becomes one and then adds one to become two and so on. So let's try this. Uh, well, seems kind of working. However, there is a problem as you can see. All our spaces are actually missing. Uh, maybe we could have a look at this P and you see that, oh, all the white spaces have been removed. So this tends to be a problem with the inner text and I'm not sure why I used inner text. Uh, just a hiccup on my side. What you should use is, as I said on the, the lecture, is text content instead of inner text. First of all, text content is more, it's not as resource heavy as, as inner text because inner text needs to render the DOM before it can uh, evaluate and that is because in a text takes into account if, if a, a text is hidden or not. It will not return a hidden text or a display non-text in CSS, uh, which text content doesn't care about the styling. It just looks at the DOM, uh, DOM uh, text node and that is what we want. So I will remove in a text and add text content instead <coughs> and we'll try it out. And I press, and now you can see it will also add the, the white spaces. And this one was slow, so maybe 100 was the correct way of going. Yeah, and I said, I mean, 
Now I'm, I'm configuring how fast this one will write by just hard coding a value into, uh, yeah, it will, now we get a problem as well. Uh, just hard coding a value into to, uh, to my code like this. Of course, if, if you were to do this part board and you can do this as an exercise as well, try to, to, to make it so that this value, the 50 might be the default one, but the user will be able to change that value by adding an attribute, like you have the text, you could add an attribute called speed, where you put in number of milliseconds, how fast this board will write. And, and then you could configure it by, by doing text and speed equals 200, like that. Take that as an exercise, I will not show that, but it will be a good exercise for you to do. Uh, okay, you notice the problem, it stopped writing after the, 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 the sentence was finished. finished. And maybe if we look, no it doesn't. However, what the problem in this case is that this dot underscore letter plus plus will start getting characters that are not present in the string. Basically, so we will try to get the character 100 and one, the character 100 is not in the string So it will just return an empty string to us. So we need some kind of test uh, evaluating if uh, if the letter uh, Count is, is larger than the length of the string then we will reset the letter count so I will do that with a simple if statement if this uh, letter uh, equals or is uh, larger than or equals the uh, this get attribute text dot length and in this case yeah well unexpected token. Do, do, do. I have parentheses errors. Where is the parentheses error? That one is that one for the if statement. And the if statement starts there. Get that through this get attribute. Oh, it's so hard to see sometimes. Where is it? Oh, of course, <laughs> I haven't done that one yet. Guess that was the problem. Yeah. Uh, so, if that test uh, um, executes so that the number of letters is larger than or equal to the length of the string, then we will do this dot underscore letter uh, equals zero. So we will just reset the letter. Keep trying that one. I will not pollute the global scope. I will not pollute the global scope. I will not pollute the global scope. I will not pollute. Okay, maybe we should do another trick. Maybe we should do something like this dot. And in this case, I'm getting this attribute a lot in this, uh, this function uh, or in, in this if statement. So let text equals that one, then we could shorten this by just doing text, text, and this uh, text dot, uh, bo -bo 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 -bo. no, oh, well, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm wrong, but doesn't matter. So we will also add a blank space to this text content like that. Just to get an extra blank space after each sentence. Like that. Hmm? Looks like that works perfectly fine now. So this pretty much solves the requirements of, of, of the exercise. Well, 
I've added some and, and we will have a look at those as well. So when the board is full, and I will set this one to 10 instead, now it's faster. So this one will continue writing even though the board is full. Uh, we'll stop when I release, but it will kind of keep on writing underneath the viewport. And it does this because if we look in the CSS, I've set the, the BART board's height to 200 and I have the overflow hidden. So, so I say that never overflow this, um, uh, this board. If I do it like that, it will probably do something else. Yeah, it will just continue writing and this one came atop of, of the other one. So overflow hidden will make it so that we cannot write outside the board. Uh, now we need some kind of test of, of checking when the board is full. And a nice thing with that would be to, to kind of uh, be able to tell the world or tell the ones using our custom element that the board is full. And we can do that by dispatching our own uh, events. Oh well, I forgot one thing. Uh, so good practice, when you add, like we've added event listeners to our uh, uh, BART board, a good practice is to also remove those event listeners so that when the, the, the BART board is removed from the DOM, the event listeners are removed as well, so that we are sure of that. I think the browser is pretty good at figuring this out itself and removing the event listeners, but when we use things like interval, for instance, if, if that element is removed when the interval is triggering, that one will keep on triggering forever. Uh, so we need to clean up our code and we can do that in disconnected callback. So I will add disconnected callback and I will just copy my event listeners like this and Instead of add, I will do a remove. Don't remember how to use multiple cursors, but that's a neat trick if you know it. Uh, so since we are using uh, um, basically references to those functions, we could do this uh, because we need to send in the same reference to remove listener as to add event listener. Okay. And now we can also do a clear timeout or on stop writing. We could basically, in our dis disconnected callback, we could call this dot on stop writing. However, ooh, this looks kind of stupid. So on stop writing is supposed to be an event. We're not using the event, so I will basically rename this to stop writing. I, I, I will make it public and I will call it stop writing so anyone can tell this component to stop, stop writing. Uh, in this case I need to, and this is pretty much only semantics, I mean doesn't add functionality, it's just looks a little bit cleaner if I say stop writing like that and like that. Oh, and <laughs> like that, could have used the rename method. So stop writing uh, and I could manually call stop writing like that, a little bit neater. So now we've cleaned up as well, this should still work. But if we were to remove, I will not show that, but if we were to remove it, it will basically also uh, uh, remove the event listeners. So no, no memory leakage uh, in that case. Uh, so what did I do with that one? Oh, I removed the attribute changed callback. Mm, yeah. Uh, so, Since we are reading the, the attribute all the time from the DOM, 
we actually have no need for the attribute changed callback at this moment. Uh, we could reflect this to a uh, to a property on the um, um, a property on 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 the Bart board if we like, doing something like uh, this text equals uh, new value, and we would probably need some kind of if name equals text as well, since we might have several attributes later on, like adding the speed, for instance. Uh, and then we could like work with this dot text instead of uh, uh, working with uh, this dot uh, get attribute text. Uh, and we could actually set the text to something default in, 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 in the constructor, like Ah, like Lotsdå, that is written on all boards in Sweden. Uh, so that is the uh, default for the text. Uh, maybe this one should be semi-private as well. So I will do that. And then instead of, of, I don't even think we need this one now because we have a default value, so we remove that if statement uh, and we do something like that save we don't need that one so this will actually remove a lot and this will be this dot underscore text instead this dot underscore text instead well that was neat I think let's see if it works oh it still works perfect Okay, and now it's pretty straightforward if you want to add the speed, like, okay, let's try it actually. Speed, we will watch for speed. Uh, in this one, uh, we could do else if name equals speed. Uh, we could do the same thing with this dot speed speed equals a new value uh, and we could add this dot speed to be 50 as default and instead of just writing 10 we do this dot underscore speed like that right still works default speed is 50 now we could uh, do something like on this board the one with I will not write JavaScript we make that faster by adding speed 10 so this one oh reload this one quite slow this one a lot faster nice that was pretty simple uh, thing to do and 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 I mean as as you saw it was so little work to make this more config configurable. As long as you, you add a default value, I mean, you can do this and uh, still and leave it out of the, to the user that uses your components control instead. There are more to say about adding, uh, adding attributes. I've not tell, told the whole truth. Uh, however, for, for the sake of the course, I think this is good enough actually. But if you follow uh, the reading instructions for the, the DOM uh, element lecture, you will basically find a good reference with a deeper explanation how to, to set those attributes and properties and how to reflect those in a good way. Um, okay. What was the next problem? Well, we the board is full. If the board is full, we need to do something. So the first thing I will do is just to, to, to be able to figure out how to know if the board is full. Uh, so this took me a while, actually. I, I thought that in some versions of the browser there was an event called overflow that we could like get an, get an event when the, an element overflowed. Uh, and, and that would have been quite simple in this case to just watch the overflow and when the p element kind of overflows the outer element we will we will get a message however i didn't get that to work and it seems to be 
kind of working in some browsers and, and, and not in others. So I, I reverted to a simpler solution or a simple solution, or at least a, a, as good as a, a, of a solution. And that is, since the P element is inside of the BART board, I mean, if we look in the DOM, you see that the P element is inside of the BART board. So if I look at the height of the P element and compare it to the height of the BART board, if the P element's height is greater than the BART board, then we have like overflown the BART board. So the, t the, the code for that is using something called offset height. Uh, so inside of the, uh, the interval, we could do an if. So we check if this dot of set remember this is is the bart board element so this uh, or well if 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 the p element then we we can reference the p by underscore p so if this underscore p dot offset height is greater than or equal to this dot uh, of set height. So if the p elements of the height is greater than or equal to the offset height of the uh, uh, um, the board board, then the board is full. Console dot log. You could probably make that test even more accurate, accurate, but this is good for now. Uh, full. So we just log that it's full. Okay. Uh, the console start writing. Take this one is the quickest. Boom, full. Uh, as you can see, it will like kind of continue triggering, and that is because the interval will continue triggering and saying full, 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 full. Uh, so. We need to stop that. If it, if the board is full, there is no reason to 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 continue writing on the board, and to stop the board, we just do it this dot stop writing. Oh, sorry, like that. Okay, let's try it again. Full, and then it stopped. Uh, perfect. Okay, so instead of just logging full, we will now try to dispatch. A custom, a custom event. Uh, and we create a custom event by doing let event equals uh, new window dot uh, custom event custom event like that. Uh, we will come to the argument soon or well now. Uh, as the first argument we will say what will we call this event. I would call it filled. Uh, so uh, when the board is full, it will say we will dispatch the filled uh, filled um, uh, event. Okay, and as a second argument, we could add details or add our own uh, details to this this uh, um, this custom event by doing detail details and then writing an object or, or an array or whatever we would like to send to the as event information to the field. For instance, we could have a, a, a letter counter that would count the number of letters or the number of sentences, sentences that was uh, written, something like that. I will not do that for now, so I will leave this one empty. I will actually remove it. We will only create a custom element called field. And we will dispatch, dispatch this element, and you dispatch the element on on uh, or dispatch the event on the element that you 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 want, or in this case our custom element. And our custom element in this case is the board, and the board is this is this. So this dot dispatch. Uh, it's correct. Yep, event. So I will dispatch an event, and what event? The one we created. I mean. Now you could optimize this by doing that since we are dispatching and creating it at the same time. And then we could just get rid of that one. So we dispatch the event called, called fill to just notify that the board is full. Um, and that 
is pretty much it. Well, since this, if the board is full, it will do this, it will stop right, and then we'll add another character since this is done afterwards. So I will basically just do a return as well, just to stop all the writing. Okay, let's try it. Still works. Nothing will probably happen since we're not logging, we're not doing anything. Probably works. So let's try it if it works. If we go to app.js, where we created our barport number one, we could do a bb1.add event listener. And we can listen for the field event. And if the field event dispatches, we can run some code. Uh, what do we want to do? We will say console.log uh, field, like that. Uh, oh, comma. Yep. Right. Bom, 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 bom. <laughs> they didn't work. Well, is the nurse at the order? Maybe, 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 maybe. Like that. Does that matter? No. Oh, what is wrong? What is wrong? Add event listener field. So, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I tried it on this one. Um, this one is the BB1, right? So let's speed that one up. Uh, BB1 dot set attribute speed to two milliseconds. Oh, this is a, let's try it. Well, BB1 is not defined. Oh. It's fast. Failed. And it stops writing as well. And if I try to write again, it will just say filled instantaneously. So, so, well, all fine there. So instead of just saying filled, we should have a possibility to, to kind of wipe the board. Um, or to do something uh, with this BB1. So we can, I mean, remember, this BB1 is only a, a class, so you could call the methods on the class right away. So if we create a class on, or a method on this one called wipe board, like that, uh, we could call wipe board. What would wipe board do? Well, uh, it will uh, just Erase all the text content of the P, this one. Start off by doing that. And yeah, oh, adds an, an empty string to the P text content. And to be sure, we will also uh, uh, set the letter to zero, but shouldn't be needed. But to to be sure that it always starts on zero, we could do that since we are we are still doing this when we when when we uh, dispatches this event but whatever so we have the whiteboard now in the app.js if you like you could do a bb1 dot y let's see if the intellisense is with me bb1 dot y no it's not whiteboard that save start whoop and wiped and then we could start writing again. Wiped, and we could start writing again. So, I mean, now we leave it up to the user of our Bartboard to decide how to act upon certain events, like when the board is full. Uh, so pretty powerful, I think. Uh, I hope you've learned uh, a lot <laughs> when doing this exercise. That's, that's basically the, the goal with this exercise to be a, a complementary demo uh, for the the lectures uh, concerning the DOM and, and event handling. Um, what I did not touch upon is different ways of, of, of uh, doing, uh, connecting the event handler to the um, um, 
yeah, to the ad event listener. Uh, I will probably do that in another demo, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you solve this one, uh, you're uh, pretty much up to the task to go to, to, the, to whatever exercise in the course you like, uh, because it will not get much harder than this. It will, we will start using different APIs like the Fetch API for, for getting data from, from networks and so on, but it will not get much harder than this. Uh, I think the f for this year, or well, when I record this one in 2017, the custom elements doing this extending the HTML element is new for me. I haven't done that a lot. Uh, however, I like this model of, of coding it separating into components like this. I think we will um, add that more in the future of the course. Uh, so please, please feel free, even though the requirements in some uh, exercises doesn't say that you should use custom elements, please be free to, to, to utilize this model of, of structuring your code anyways, because it will be, I think, a, a good tool to have to the, to, the, to the last assignment in the course. So that is it.